This video is sponsored by Retail Me Not. Nokia has always reserved the name PureView for phones that push the boundaries of photography. When it launched in 2012, the original packed a then giant 41 megapixel sensor, and the PureView Lumia phones that followed helped popularize optical image stabilization, and they spent years just slaying everyone else when it came to low light photos. The newest PureView comes from a new Nokia, and it tackles a new angle. This is the Nokia 9, and its mission is to bring some of the quality of professional still cameras without the cost and the bulk. When it succeeds, it produces photographs that ooze character, with dynamic range and depth you won't see on any other phone. But just like you don't get money for nothing, you don't get these clicks for free. I know you're here for the photos, folks, and I'm going to share them in a minute, but just like a customer buying this phone, you're going to have to sit through the compromises first. Some of the Nokia 9's problems have fixes already in development, like the camera app being very sluggish to switch between modes and even occasionally crashing. But Nokia isn't going to be able to fix design decisions that impede the everyday experience. Let's start by taking a look at my storage. After less than three weeks of using this device, I've used almost 40% of its 128 gigs. Now, that's mainly because the camera supports raw capture, which means it kicks out some pretty big files if you toggle it on. But if you're going to include that feature, why wouldn't you build in a micro SD card to more easily offload photos? Nokia's counterargument is that Google Photos lets you back up all your images for free, but it only offers that at reduced quality. You've got to pay for the original quality backups, and it's still much slower. I'll share my workaround for this at the end of the video. Add to that omission the lack of a dedicated camera button. Sure, it's a niche complaint, but the kind of people who value a camera like this also value the option of a nice big mechanical shutter key with half press to focus for more easily framing a shot. And even if you don't care about that, you will care about this fingerprint reader. Put simply, it's the worst one currently on the market. It's hard to train, it almost never recognizes me on the first attempt, and it keeps telling me to press harder when it doesn't get a firm read until I feel like I'm, I'm almost squeezing the phone to death. I eventually became so frustrated with this that I just gave up and fell back on the non-secure face unlock. Now, I asked Nokia if those promised software updates would improve this, and the company wouldn't commit to that. Those updates are mainly focused on the camera. So yeah, it's bad, and it seems likely to stay bad, which is too bad. Let's talk about what's good, and let's start with the centerpiece of the whole affair. Five 12 megapixel cameras, identical except for their sensors. Two are color cameras, three are monochrome. That system is developed by Nokia's partner, The Light Company, an apt name since the whole point of using three black and white sensors is to pull more light into the camera system. Look alongside the LED flash and you'll also see the time of flight sensor that makes possible the other photo promise a depth map with up to 1,200 layers. It's a lot of words and a lot of terms, so let me show you the best way to illustrate the effect of all this technology. I'll share my screen with you. Now, when you're framing a shot like this, the preview image on your screen is just a live feed coming from the one center color camera. When you hit the shutter, the phone fires all five cameras at once, it combines their data in the light module, and passes it through the image signal processor in the Snapdragon 845. All that processing can take a while, up to 10 seconds per shot in my experience, but look what happens when the processing takes hold. Bam! You get a photo that more often than not is incredibly true to life. The differences in phone cameras have become so granular that it can be really hard to put them into words. So I talked at length with my friend Mark Lentangan about this, and what he helped me realize is that it's really about the processing. The depth stuff? I mean, this phone certainly does it better than any other phone, but it's still prone to errors we've been seeing for six years, like losing the edges of the subject. And that 1200 layer depth map, I'm, I'm really not seeing it in every shot. What I am seeing, though, is this remarkable authenticity in color and texture, an authenticity that other phones often compromise with oversharpening or oversaturation. Don't get me wrong, I'm a fan of that style of photo great for Instagram, but taking a shot like this one, 
this totally unremarkable scene that I photographed only because I woke up to it and thought the lights and shadows were cool, and having it come out of the phone exactly as I remember it, that's pretty incredible. Same for this night shot from Boston. Notice how details are equally well rendered both in the shadows, which could be easily crushed, and in the neon lights, which could be easily blown out. So far, I've only shown you JPEGs with minimal, if any, edits. But remember, the Nokia 9 also shoots in RAW, so you can take these photos into Lightroom and tweak them to a far greater degree. Now, other phones can shoot in RAW, but almost none of them can give you as much data to work with in each photo, because, you know, no other phone has five cameras shooting at once. Knowing I have these capabilities at my fingertips means I approach a scene and a subject differently with the Nokia 9 than with any other phone, especially when I know ahead of time that I'm going to be able to capture a monochrome shot that doesn't blow out the highlights, but still manages to pull a lot of detail from the shadows. Again, the depth stuff is fun, don't get me wrong, but it's still a bit of a gimmick. This phone is all about the processing. Some video and selfie samples for you while I touch on the rest of the phone. In the good category, Android 9 is almost as stock as it gets. There's good voice call quality and a vibration motor so sharp it almost feels like a snap more than a buzz. It's really cool. Also, the battery, while not the biggest on the market, has never had trouble seeing me to the end of a long day, even while shooting the whole time. The wireless charging for the win as well. In the frustrations folder, this phone runs hot when it's working on processing those photos. It's also got a speakerphone that's rather thin and tinny. And while it's quite durable, the reason I know that is because it's the slipperiest phone I've used in years. It falls off everything. That all leads to a final verdict, which I'll share with you along with that storage tip I promised after a quick word from my sponsor. Folks, I like deals, but I don't like searching for them. And that's where today's sponsor comes in. Retail Me Not is the ultimate savings destination for shopping online or in store. And they've got an awesome new tool that makes saving easier than ever when shopping online. You just install a free browser extension called the Retail Me Not Genie. It lives up here alongside your address bar and searches for promo codes and cashback options in the background while you shop. When you check out, it automatically applies the best discounts and cashback offers possible, so you don't have to. It doesn't get much easier than that, and again, it's free. Hit the link in the description to install the Retail Me Not Genie, and if you want to enter to win a $100 Visa gift card at the same time, just reply to my pinned comment below, telling me what deal you're most excited to use. Happy shopping, and thanks to Retail Me Not for sponsoring this video. How I feel about the Nokia 9 is best summed up by Dr. Tolian Soren, RIP. This is a remarkable piece of equipment. Nokia and Lite have created a camera system that often over delivers in ways I didn't expect. That said, it's not going to be my next top pocket find. Given the shortfalls like the fingerprint sensor, the inconsistent depth effects, and the lack of micro SD, it still feels like a bit of a beta. Oh, and my workaround for the SD is this jump drive recommended to me by Jaime Rivera. Not sponsored, I just like it. But more importantly, I've come to value another kind of versatility in my camera phones, framing options. I love the flexibility of wide angle and telephoto cameras alongside a standard one. And the Nokia 9 just can't offer that with the way its system works. I also like that I can whip out a Pixel 3 and pull what feels like impossible details from a shot in near pitch blackness, which I can't do with the Nokia 9 even in pro mode with a 10 second exposure. Factor in the $700 price tag, and I come away knowing that while I someday want to own a camera phone designed by Nokia and Lite, I'll probably want it to be the next one. I'd love to hear your views on this one, folks, and all the camera-focused phones hitting the market soon. Drop a line in the comments. Also, swing by my Instagram channel for more samples from the Nokia 9 and every other device I can get my hands on this season. My handle there is the Mr. Mobile, just like it is on YouTube. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Until next time, thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.